What up, y'all? You know what it is, baby. It's the Morning Hustle with L'Oreal. Yes. Myself, Kyle Santillian, <laughs> and we have guests in the studio today doing big things, man. Miss Asiana Alexis is here, and of course, our brother Da Vinci is in the <laughs> building. <laughs> gang, gang. <laughs> And y'all got a lot going on, but I know we're here to talk about your newest project. Uh, two movies coming out on Lifetime, executive produced by Mary J. Blige. You got Real Love, and you got Strength of a Woman, and you guys are doing something really great with that. So let me give it up for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And it was a great movie. I only got to see Real Love so far. I'm okay. still waiting to see Strength of a Woman. Got mm-hmm. to see the follow-up. But Real Love, okay. Now, this is a classic song. Yes. Mary J. Blige, everybody's favorite. Favorite Mary J. Blige. Uh-huh. Wait, is it? Is I'm just saying, is it cliche if I say yeah, it is my favorite? <laughs> it really is. is yeah, it? Real what about you, Da Vinci? Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, that one. And then um, there's a song she had with Meek Mill, "Who You Around." Okay, yeah. I like that song too. Yeah, okay. yeah. Where were y'all when Real Love came out? Because I think um, was you born? What year was it? <laughs> yeah, what year was it? 1992. Two? I was gonna say oh, three. Oh, wasn't? Okay, no, I wasn't alive. We were, yeah, I wasn't alive. You was not alive. I said we weren't here. That's crazy. She was not alive. I was in the creations. Yeah. <laughs> in the my, daughter, my daughter likes to refer to the time before her birth. She says, I was in the ether at that time. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I hear that. I, 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 say, I say my dad's not... I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's radio. I was swimming. Oh, wow. Cut that out. Oh, yeah. I was just That's I was hilarious. swimming, being free. Nah, it's cool. Beep, you can say beep. how you want to say it. So, originally, I was looking like, okay, what is Terry and Kato doing together on... Uh... <laughs> it's not Terry and it's not Kato. <laughs> right. For those that are listening, Terry and Kato from BMF, BMF series. BMF, exactly. Who is Terry and Kato? I don't even know who that is. Who that is? <laughs> <laughs> so, but did y'all, because were y'all working on BMF before or after Real Love? No, we worked on it before. Before. Yeah. So, y'all seen each other was like, uh-huh, we got yeah, that no. bag. Your, yeah, your yeah. check went through, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. I do like the outfits a lot because I did see some inspiration from Mary J. Blige. If you think back to like how she would dress with the bandanas mm-hmm. and stuff like that, I saw a lot of inspiration. Was that done on purpose? I'm sure. Absolutely, yeah. They uh, actually gave us a lot of creative input for the most part. But her team as well, they were very um, hands-on when it came to wardrobe and hair and makeup. Yeah. yeah. I love what that. What year is it set in? It 95? is, yes. 95. 90. Let me tell you about 90, this story. Yeah, 92, actually. We should yeah. know. Yeah. I think it should be the year Real Love came out, so it's probably, yeah. Yeah, 90, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah 90, 92. Yeah, yeah. I always see if y'all was paying right. attention. Uh-huh. Let me tell you how big <laughs> this story is. I haven't had a chance to see it just yet, but let me say this. The fact that it's set on an HBCU campus yes. in North Carolina in the 90s, and that's where you two meet, and as we'll find out later on, the strength of a woman kind of continue the relationship, this is very much... Very close to my life. Mm. I went to HBCU in North Carolina. It's where I met my wife. And here oh, we are wow. together years later. That's crazy. So holding yeah, it down. Yeah, he also yeah. used to wear the shorts just like Mary J. Blige. <laughs> the, the small one. No. <laughs> I didn't do that. So, but just That's talk crazy. about just the HBCU uh, North Carolina aspect of it. Um, how are you guys able to just kind of transcend, get on that campus, pick up that HBCU vibe? What was that part of it like for you? Because it's got to be completely different from playing in the streets and the whole gangster lifestyle that comes with, you know, the BMF stuff. Talk a little bit about the HBCU experience. I think me and DaVinci, we both, um, we had to kind of push to make sure they kind of kept the HBCU feel and vibe throughout the movie. For sure. But I think it's just a culture thing. Like, I come from a diverse background, but I think, you know, when it comes to just the culture overall, we can just naturally feel what feels real. And I feel like this show is just about keeping it real and natural and you know what's really going on at HBCU. I didn't go to an HBCU, so yeah, no, no, I went to a regular uh, college, but it PWI, was PWI, PW, yeah, yeah, PWI, you could say. But it's crazy because I came off of an HBCU tour prior to doing the movie. Right. So right after the tour, I got the offer for the movie. So I was like, oh, this is actually like crazy. Perfect. Because I was just around like all the HBCU kids, so I like I got a good feel of that you know yeah so, and you yeah. guys touched on so many serious topics in the movie things that people go through in everyday life like having your family not agree with who you're dating mm-hmm. that was one of the issues that you had and mainly because of uh upbringing was different right mm-hmm. did you ever have somebody that you really really cared about may might have even been a friend not necessarily somebody you was in a relationship with that you brought around your family and they was like no this isn't the person for you and they were actually right <laughs> Her family's right there. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's actually, it's actually the 
actually the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that chuckle was just like, <laughs> and you really heard that chuckle like, too. No, like, uh, no one I can think of. Yeah, say it, Adriana. Say it. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. Uh, That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all might gotta leave the room. We need a real. <laughs> no. She's got names. Right <laughs> Y'all don't gotta leave. You know what though? Me and my, I will say, my family, we so tight niche that. If I know you're not right, they not. I'm the. I'm not gonna bring you yeah. around. I just know, like I'm not doing that automatically. Know? Yeah. I just yeah. Know. What about you? And I, honestly, that that it never it never happened uh, for me. You know, I I'm not as close with my parents as like a lot of people are. Mm-hmm. So I never even had the ability to be in a situation to where my parents could just be like, oh, I don't think this person is like it's a bad influence. You know. So honestly, it's a blessing to even have a parent to say that. I'm not that close with them, you know. Yeah. I was just, I was just kind of raised and born a little different from the average. But person. you're Haitian, right? Yeah. That's your background. Yeah. And so a lot of my friends growing up, and my cousin's <laughs> Haitian too. I grew up in an area where there was a lot of Haitians, and their parents wasn't very. They were very strict yeah, towards they, them, and not very. Lo- I wouldn't say I've ever seen them hug. Yeah, 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 for real. Like it's just very strict and not loving, and they're just busy, just trying to meet the basic needs and survival that they don't even pay attention to the child. Mm. Like, as if the child is a human. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I always tell Asiana, like, I'm just so fired the relationship you have with your parents. Like, just to be able to call your mom and dad and be like, yo, I got, you know, them to be right here. Like, that's, yeah. that is that's beautiful. That's big, yeah. But now, so now that you're doing what you're doing and you're making moves, like, has that relationship started to develop or grow anymore? Or is it still I mean, kind of distant? Nah, if anything, I think the success of this brought more complexities within my family. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, the cool thing about it is that I get to, you know, change that narrative by the person I marry and I have kids and I yeah. can just change that. You right. Know, I can break that curse. So uh-huh. For sure. like, my head is on straight. It doesn't it doesn't phase me because I never had it, so it doesn't hurt me. Right. So it's just, it's people who had it, they look at me like, oh my God. It's like, but I don't know what I'm missing. I don't know what I don't know. Right. Yeah. And I turned out all right. So to me it's like I'm cool. And right. you are married. Yeah. No. Uh, oh, okay. I think I got a little confused from the <laughs> that Jason was, that was a Lee. Rumor. That was a rumor. Okay, because I mean, you that did was, a... I was just basically saying, like, just leave me alone with dating okay. questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's basically what By I was the trying way, to tell Jason. I feel bad for you. Huh? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> because I would think that, is that annoying? Because every time you do a movie and you have some sort of chemistry with a female counterpart, they're always going to question the fact that, well, are you, you guys have a lot of chemistry. Are right. you two dating? It is, is that annoying. annoying. It's like, bro, I'm doing my job, bro. Like, if yeah, I was. No, like... When we first got to the, on set, like, after we started filming, everybody would just watch us all day. I think they were just so. Yeah, and they're just like crazy. They were just like watching us, like, oh my God. Like they want that. And, and, like, yeah. and, and yeah. They, they would do things like as if like if I do something, they'll tell Asiana. And if Asiana do something, she'll tell me like we answered each other. I'm like, yeah, no, like, <laughs> right. what are you trying to get me in trouble? Like, what is she about to say right. to me? Like, but like, you didn't get, get in trouble. Did he no, get in trouble? No, they just kind of like report to me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to get him a chip. That's <laughs> right. But that's one. That's one thing about um, just being a celebrity, right? Because at some point, you know, you were wishing to be in the space that you are right now, and I, I'm going to just say it. I've never really felt bad about when celebrities like, God, I wish people would leave me alone. Or just, and the third, it's like, come on, you kind of knew that comes with the job. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, right. we can't be on the radio without certain things happening. I think celebrities, a lot of times, when you see them acting out against, like, the press and paparazzi, I'm like, you didn't know that that was going to happen before you got famous? You know what I mean? So right. when you look at those things, you get tired but of you those don't. questions. Yeah, yeah, you know you what it is. It's something, that? You, 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 you think don't. about it, but it's not something you fully grasp until you actually go through it you know it's kind of like anything in life you growing up you know your parents or anybody can teach you as much as you want hey like you know don't do this don't do that this happens Mm -hmm. you know this comes with that but your mind doesn't fully grasp it until you're right there because you're just doing something you love correct and this is you're not thinking about oh well i'm doing what i love so i got to worry about taking a picture with everybody when i go and of course you appreciate your fans but you still want to live a life as well and 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 you can't gauge how your effect is gonna be on people. Right. Like there's a lot of famous people in the world. And some people they see people, they're like, oh, that's a dude from. But that's then true. sometimes they see you, they run up to you. Uh-huh. Right. Then they wanna grab you. Then they wanna kiss you. Then they this time, you know what I'm saying? You can't gauge that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a side effect. Everything has a side effect. Like microwave side effect is cancer. You're increasing that radiation in your yeah. body. I think that's the side effect of fame. And there's no there's no rule book, there's no ingredient. You can't gauge that. And I I despise when people say, well, didn't you sign up for this? It's like, right. no, bro, you don't know what this entails. Right. It's like when you, you know what I'm saying? You don't like, you don't know all the ins and outs and the nuances mm-hmm. and the complexities that 
your psychology have to adjust to when you lived your whole life not dealing with being so exposed like you're so exposed i wake up every morning like dang i'm living my dream like sometimes i'm in the studio and i'll talk to my dad i'll be like oh i'm at work like yeah. this work for yeah, real so real it's work. like yeah. to me it's just it overpowers everything because it doesn't feel like work i feel like i never worked a day in my life for the most part, that's, not that's that. Right? Yeah. But you know, it just feels <laughs> really? like I really have yeah. it was time. That one day until, on set, until I get that four, until I get that four a.m. call time, and I'm like, I ain't no. <laughs> he's like, uh, no, no, that's that four a.m. That four a.m. hit, but no, like I enjoy every that's, moment of it. Like it'd be so fun to me every time. That's I good, I enjoy it. I enjoy it as well. But to say every moment, nah, I don't enjoy every moment. Like some of the stuff, some of the stuff that comes with it, I'd be like, nah. But I enjoy being able to be in a space and creating. Like there was moments that we had when we were filming and creating, like it was like, it was great breakthroughs for me. Cause she's been doing this as just like a, a kid. I've mm -hmm. had a regular kid type of life experience. Right. So it was like, so there's moments when you're working with professionals and you're just like, oh, snapping and you, you're learning from them and you're having these breakthroughs and it's beautiful. Like shooting the project is the best part. Right. Mm -hmm. That is the best part of right. what we do, doing the actual project. But there's the other stuff that come with it. Like going to radio stations and talking to L'Oreal and Kyle Cotillion. I ain't gonna no. lie. I ain't gonna lie. If I had a choice, I would be in my bed right now. No! I ain't even you. Well, I mean, we, we glad you came. Because we get to have these real conversations. Right. And, and yeah. This is fun to me. This is no, this is fun. Now, y'all cool, though. I don't care what they say about y'all. Y'all cool. Y'all cool. I know. I'm not afraid of the morning hustle. Hey, Let's go. <laughs> okay, so when it comes to, like, personal stuff, right? Relationships. We just had Raven Simone speak out not too long ago. And since you've been in the game for so long this should be something that i like i really want to know from you but both of y'all do you have people sign ndas when it comes to relationships <laughs> or do you think that that's something you might want to incorporate <laughs> this is good stuff <laughs> <laughs> i know absolutely i mean tell the people I'm like not not everyone but you know i think it's when you get to a certain level you, level you definitely have to consider it and you know you want to Keep a healthy relationship, but you just got to protect yourself at the end of the day because just because you have good intentions and a good heart and where you come from, it doesn't mean everybody's thinking and moving like that. And that's something I've learned being in the industry because I'm I'm just very pure with my intentions, but you got to be more aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Da Vinci's quiet. Mm -hmm. No, I was just listening to what she was saying. <laughs> you said <laughs> tell the people. What do you want her to tell the people? No, I just wanted to hear what, you know, a professional like herself <laughs> That's all. I really got you don't have no thoughts on that one. On that question? Yeah. I mean, what was the, the question? Is like, <laughs> the NDA, non disclosure agreement. Do I make people sign Would that? you? Is that something that you may look forward, uh, moving forward, incorporate into your relationships? Like, and personal, oh, personal relationships. relationships. Yeah, I mean, as far as like anything. I think if, if I have to look sexual. at you like that and do that, then I don't want nothing that's to do with you. Yeah. See, that's what that's I would think. Like, to me, it's just like, I don't is, think yeah. like, personal like i mean if we're doing business and we got to be contractually obligated to make sure we get the objective done so if you wake up tomorrow not feeling like you want to go to work like nigga, we got to do this yeah but a personal relationship i want you to love me off of free will not because you're contractually obligated to love right. me but the we see things play out there though so. is if it's a business relationship <clears throat> a lot of kind of a lot of times that kind of stuff is already incorporated in the contract and stuff sure. like that so this question only becomes even a question because of personal stuff that people leak. I'm going to put out a book about Da Vinci 10 years from now or those kind of things. And I feel I feel like she's perfectly in her right when we talk about Raven Simone. And I think anybody that's in a position like you guys should consider it because you never know what people are. But, but I think like on a personal level, like if I just we were just going to the gym working out. Yeah. And I was like, yo, you're cool, man. Let's hoop. And then I'm like, wait, wait, wait. But I want you to sign this. Just in case, like going forward in our friendship. Yeah, because you crazy. know what? You might have a phone call that's that crazy. you have in front of them that slips up. And when, let me tell you something. I think about and when, he when get I think sued of, for that. Yeah, but you know, when I think about this, I even think about people close to you, like Whitney. <clears throat> like not trying to be funny or nothing, but some of these stories, I'm pretty sure she didn't want us to know. Mm -hmm. But once Whitney passed, the closest people to her was like, "Yeah, you know, we was in a relationship," and you're like, "Damn, we didn't even know she was doing all right. that." So I think about the people closest to you when somebody like Raven is saying, "Like, I need to get them to sign this because you never know in the future." Think about divorce. Think about when people take half of somebody's money. They mm -hmm. fighting you for your children. So you don't think they're gonna spill a secret? Yo, y'all making me paranoid. I mean, <laughs> oh I think like this. God. I think this is more in getting older and like, being in the what? game for yeah. so long. Yeah. And I've seen so much things happen mm -hmm. that it's it's not 
it's not scared. It's caution. So like, what? Would, so what you would, pray, but that don't mean you think something gonna happen. So when you what walk would out happen the to the person? Like so, like if we met at the gym mm-hmm. and then he signed an NDA, and then I had a conversation with Asiana, like Yo, Asiana, they want us to do this other movie together, and this time we're like, shit, they gotta pay us ten million each, right? <laughs> right? And, then, and then and then you leak that information. What would happen to him? I think I'd put myself in a position where I could be sued. Sued, yeah. You know what I mean? And that would be the protection. Like I don't want to have to put myself like uh, the chick that Cardi B sued for Tasha K. Tasha K. Right. Now she got all of these fines. She's going to be messed up for life over that. So Millions. If I sign an NDA, I wouldn't want to put myself in that position. I would know that I could get sued. And any information that I might leak, then I can't even make money off of it. Like it kinda, you run your mouth, you got to pay. Away, it kind of takes away. Oh, so you yeah. can't even go to TMZ because nah, they don't know who to give the credit. I can't even make money off this because now but, I put myself in a position where I'm I'm contractually buying. You can make money, quiet. but every dollar but you ma- made, I'm making back. back yeah, anyway. I'm making back. But maybe it could go through some anonymous thing, you know? Like an LLC, your name's not even really attached well, to it. Well, wouldn't you kind of nine times out of ten know that you said certain things in front of certain people? <laughs> so that's what the whole thing is. You know what I mean? But we can move on from this. Y'all got to think about everything he just said. He's like, I'm about to call my lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, too late to backtrap, boy. T- let's get back to Kendra and really Ben. Yeah. Let me bring it here real quick, because wow. DaVinci, I know that you talked a second ago about doing the work is the most fun part of what you do. But let's talk about some of the other things you do, because I was looking at how coming into the game, it could have been acting, it could have been rapping. Yeah. You know what I mean? I hear there's a little bit of stand-up comedy out there right, on the yeah, circuit yeah. for you. Talk about some of the other things that you're doing and how important is that for you to make it uh, be successful in those lanes as well? Um. So I, I, de- I started off doing music. I've always, like, I grew up doing music. I played the piano, the trumpet, violin. Nice. I write music, I read music. Like, I was... That's I real talent like, right I'm, there. I'm like, yeah. Actually, uh, I got a bass guitar, a guitar at the house. Like, I really, like, know how to do music, but... The industry, the way it is, it's just, it made me not love it no more. Because mm. I realized this is the entertainment business, not the entertainment arts. You mm. know what I'm saying? So I was just like, all right, I got to go a different direction. And I got to try to find my peace. Like, the goal is to be financially free. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I and I love the art. So I'm like, let me do one of these things, but find peace with doing it. So I was like, you know, let me put music to the side. I still write for fun, but now it's just not in that way. But I'm right. like, okay, acting took off. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, you know, I want to find a way to interact with my fans in a different way. Because I have, like, a lot of, like, fans that really rock with me. And I was like, yo, let me start hosting comedy shows. And then they started selling out. And like the reaction was like, it was crazy. Wow. Yeah, you know, dope. and then uh, shout out to certain comedians like my man Alton right here. All right. Uh, who was you like, know this guy? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. you can take him with you. Yeah, I, I will. I, will. I take him on the road with me. Shout out to Alton for real. Alton Walton, man, like, uh, you know, he pulled me aside before shows. He saw me writing my stuff in my notes and then he fire. gave me little pointers mm-hmm. and things like that. And then now it's turned from hosting to actually having like, my set and you know I've been making my fans laugh and it's, and it's been taking over and becoming its own thing oh my god nice. I could be Da Vinci one day because Alton actually believes in me as a stand up comedian <laughs> yeah, that's as true, well right? so yeah. I can be just like you Can I could take your roles uh, too thousand percent <laughs> before, nah, before you get too far I can't do that. off from the music <laughs> is it true that you somewhat got discovered in Jay-Z's mother's restaurant, restaurant? yeah that's true Yeah, me and Gloria Carter is cool actually that's no crazy way. yeah yeah, it, it's, yeah. It's, how did it's, that so, come about where's her restaurant um, uh, it was in Newark, New Jersey called Diamonds in the Rough, but I think they, they shut it down now. Yeah, but um, when I moved from Florida, I was 19. I got my degree in criminal justice, and I was like, I'm not really doing this. I was just trying to please my parents. So I moved back to New York, and um, my godmother and Gloria Carter happened to be cool, and she was like, yo, they have open mic nights. So you should go there and perform. I was just like, what? This is crazy. This is JC's mom. <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm about to be signed yeah. the like, yeah. So I went there. The I performed. I, like I performed. I got discovered uh, by a manager. And then, uh, you know, I would always come there every open mic on Thursdays. And I perform. I do different things. And I would sit with Gloria and Gloria. She would tell me everything she used to tell Jay Z. Wow, and then that's uh, fire. That is fire. Yeah, and then I would just sit there and soak it in. And I remember one time I was leaving the shop. Jay Z and Beyonce was coming. I didn't see them. That happened several times. I actually oh have yet, God. but I know they know me yeah. <laughs> because Gloria, she watches Grownish, and they love Chloe and Halle were on Grownish, mm-hmm. and when I was there, and that's Beyonce's. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so it's like. It's crazy how we know each other, but we never met each other. Yeah. We might be the same person. I don't know. Yeah, you might. Can't be in the same place at the same I don't, time. My, mommy's yeah. telling us both the same thing, home, so I don't know. That's a good circle, man. That's yeah, a good circle right. So that, that's yeah, actually, sure. that's true. That's a rumor that's true. That's, that's fine. Yeah. That's dope. I love that. Yeah. Super dope. So can y'all tell us a little bit about Take Back the Night? Take Back the Night Foundation. Um, is that something that y'all are participating in with the movie? And uh, how can people also help out? 
Yeah, Take Back the Night was actually something when we kind of first started the production. Um, I had a discussion with the producers. You know, I really wanted to make sure we came up with a cause to reach out to help people that would possibly be affected by the movie. And so then we kind of partnered with Take Back the Night, which mm-hmm. is an organization, nonprofit organization that combats um, sexual violence for young kids out there. And so basically we just have a scene where they kind of gave a little about the event of what's happening. Yeah. And it's just a partnership that we did with the movie to make sure people, you know, have someone to call out to if they're suffering from anything. Yeah, and yeah. it was, like I said, it was a lot of heavy topics. I don't want to give too much away to mm-hmm. anyone that hasn't seen the movie, but there was a lot of heavy topics from uh, sexual assault mm-hmm. to, uh, I guess you could even say um, drug drug overdose at at a certain point, maybe even. And uh, people struggle with this and we hide it. And then you lash out at friends, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you don't know how to help those friends. So to have foundations like this, I think it's uh, very vital and something that we need to make sure we push to the forefront so people know what to do when they have these issues, right? And uh, especially young kids. And you were talking about college, college years. So uh, I think about Lifetime. I don't really, you know, now I see that it's a revamp, right? Yeah. And I'm seeing more black faces, young black faces on Lifetime, which we love. Yeah, absolutely. Was Mary J. Blige involved in picking you two? How did that process come with her being the executive producer of Real Love and uh, you guys being involved in the film? I mean, you want to ladies first? first? Okay. Um, <laughs> well, she, oh. I, it, it was... I, and I mean this in the humble way, like it was an offer. So I didn't, um, I was just like, I read the story and I was like, yo, this is, I love the storyline. And I was just like, I went, I was like, who you guys have playing a girl? And then, <laughs> um, and then uh, when I figured out it was going to be Asian, I was like, oh, that's dope. This is my homie. Did I you know before we got there? We can't say that on air. <laughs> <laughs> you knew. I, no, he I did. Know, no, we had this I weird thing. Even if I did, come on, we on air. Play right. that one. I know. We, we had this I, weird I, thing I, where we were, he just hit me. I was like, oh, like, what you do? <laughs> 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 he was like, I'm hitting the so-and-so about to do a film. And so when I was like doing my deal, I'm like, is he going to be there? Is that, <laughs> like, when I get and there? so we had this like just silent thing. I didn't really know until we got there. Is that telepathy? You know what I'm like, saying? Is that yeah. connection? Is that BMF connection? <laughs> but I love that to know that you don't even know. I didn't realize that you're not even made privy to who you're going to be filming right. with. I think they plot no, it. So, they, no, 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 you, you do. You Sometimes you do. You do. Okay. You I mean, do. you have a Don't, yeah. Not all no, the time. Sometimes. sometimes. It, it, it depends on, like, I really didn't who know you them. are. Like, a lot of people, like, some people, like, top dogs, they're picking I was going to say that. Right. What if it was yeah, someone you didn't yeah, like? Don't, yeah, right. don't, yeah, don't get confused. Don't get it confused. It depends there's, on what level you had to there, get. Yeah, there's people that would be like, well, who's the top three girl? Well, let me see their audition. And the actor is actually sitting with the producers. Yeah, I can yeah. tell that. Yeah, yeah, that happens all the time. Not all the time. Let me, a sometimes. lot of times with like, like the big movies. Yeah, but I'm saying sometimes, or you, that's what a test deal too. Sometimes they do like test the chemistry of people. You sure. Know, like, so you never had to get nobody up off set like, okay, he's not going to work. No, no, but we're, I'm not at that level. I'm not at that level to where we can do that. But yes, like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yes. you at that, you watching it. Like I've talked to people, they're like, no, like we knew, like we just wanted these three girls, right? And then we or one of these three guys, right? Yeah. And then they read with them. Let me ask you guys about this because I think this is a very cool aspect of what you guys are doing with these two movies, right? So, Real Love is coming out first. And then the next week, you air the second movie, Mm -hmm. Strength of a Woman, as a sequel. I don't know that I've ever seen sequels get released a week apart, which is kind of cool. So Real Love comes out, then boom, Strength of a Woman comes out a week later. And it's a 15 year year different. Right. (laughs) On the relationship between your two characters. That's a lot of movie to film in a short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, How was that for y'all? Was that tough? And how do you feel about just putting out back to back movies like that? Well, for me, I come, my background is in theater. So when I do films like this, I just feel like, oh, this is easy. Because, you know, coming from theater, you're learning like 150 something pages and Mm -hmm. you're doing it nonstop. So for me, it just feels like easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. but no, it was definitely, this was exciting for me because it was my first, you know, lead role. So taking that leadership role, I was very excited to just kind of show people that younger people can lead, you know, and this could have easily. Like you saying, it's iconic. This could have been in theaters. You yeah. know, when you watch amazing. it, you see the substance. It's mm-hmm. like, I hope this just kind of shows that, you know, younger actors and actresses, we can take the lead. Like, we can yeah. do 
big projects and hopefully people see our, my ability to do that more. And you could play anywhere from a teenager to a grown ass exactly. woman, right. grown ass right. man, right. if you got to, because black don't crack. Right. And we could go back and still look the same. Because right. we okay. were wondering about that. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's going to update you guys 15 years later. Yeah. Like, what were they going to do? to make you guys look 15 years older and how was that going to come across on screen you know for me it was it was kind of tough because we were trying to like grow my facial hair and my beard don't really come <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I got so too, I it was like you know so, what they say you got to do to grow hey, yeah, yeah, so sorry the mom <laughs> <laughs> so, so I did a little bit of that so it grew and that's why it grew like if you watch the movie and, it was, and it's a real beard that grew actually but uh, yeah that was kind of crazy but it was also tough playing a character <clears throat> that is 35 because being in our 20s we I play teenagers. Right? Yeah. I play teenagers. Right. So to play a character older than us that we never even got to live, to me I was just like, I don't know how I would be in my thirties yet. Yeah. yeah. You know so that was kinda like, how should his mannerisms kind of be? But then we we end up doing our thing. And yeah. honestly, Adriana's super talented. I ain't gonna hold you. She's yeah. Aww, she's really talented. Oh I would throw that out there. Oh, I love she's, it. She's see, really I see what talented. They had going on in mind. In mind. I'm not yeah. oh yeah, we're we gonna be a band. Yeah, I we saw him. I said we do one more movie. We're being like, yeah. <laughs> we could sit and talk to y'all all day. Y'all did amazing in the for film. Sure. Can't wait to see Strength of a Woman. Thank y'all so much for coming and stopping Absolutely. by. Absolutely. And Thanks. we want everybody to check it out on Lifetime, <laughs> June 10th. Real love, mm -hmm. okay, and then June seventeenth, strength of a woman. And can I say something very yes, of special? You so can. June tenth is so special to me, right? Because not only do we have real love premiering, it's my parents' anniversary. They've been hey, married for years. That's real love. And on top of that, Mary J. Blige and her team pushed for me to have my original song released on there. So oh, my single made for me will be out on Strength of a Woman. But it's nice. yes. oh my god! Congratulations yes. to you and your parents. Thank and Davinci's birthday. And it's my little sister's birthday. <laughs> oh, it is. Uh, yeah, I swear, June 10th. Oh, no, that's right. Look at the good. connection Look for the that. band. It's lit. June 10th is lit. Not for the band. Not for the band. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you guys are super cool. We definitely appreciate you guys coming by the morning. Hustle, man. Asiana. Da Vinci. I didn't even get to the part of your name. We'll talk about that I all know. my <laughs> I can't wait. Real love Real on love. Broadway, Strength right? Coming next. Oh, Broadway? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> no, I did Broadway, so I thought you were and like... she comes from yeah. theater, so oh, coming yeah, 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 next, yeah, yeah, Real yeah. Love Ooh. on Broadway. Let's do it. take this as long as we can take it. <laughs> Taking it on the road. Let's, Let's do it. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. That actually was going crazy, though. We are the morning.